Hello. Let's get it going. All right. I'm going to be very deliberate and slow on this one today because it is a very big topic and it is also filled with uh, a lot of complexities and I want to make sure to really ground into providing as, as much awareness, light, value, gold uh, to you if, uh, if this topic speaks to you. Um, so I want to make sure that I have everything here. Good. Upgrading the limitations of anxiety inside the neurotic mind. I already found it. inside the neurotic mind. What does it mean to have anxiety? Where does it really come from? How did I experience it? And how did I transform it, release it, turn it into, into a superpower? It's interesting that in order to immerse myself, I have to you know, call up the the experience. So of course, if I'm going to be talking about my relationship with anxiety, um, I have to be able to speak to my own emotions, right? But it's interesting because the more distance you are away from the things that you've leveled up from, the more difficult it is to to go back into them. Uh, and so that's why I want to go slow and really allow, allow this to unfold the way it, the way it wants to unfold, get out of the way. So what does it mean to have anxiety? Anxiety, anxiety is the fear of future pain. Can't remember who I got that quote from, what her name was, but that really encapsulated it for me uh, in regards to understanding that what it means to have anxiety is the belief and the processing of time in a very rigidly linear way. So anxiety being the fear of future pain, it is the threat of pain that we resist that causes anxiety. So it's not actually the pain itself, it is the the fear of the pain that makes the pain exponentially worse in our imaginations and in our mind because it is calculating all of the perceived future possibilities that could happen, the what ifs, the responsibilities, the rationalizations, the rationality. It starts to compound all of that data in, a, in, a, in the survival of the fittest way to create anxiety. Anxiety is all the belief in the reality of time in the reality of time or the over overly 
real belief in time. So what does it mean to have anxiety? It means that you are processing data, processing information, processing belief systems, processing programs, processing a global operating system that is inherently limited by a self-conscious perspective of your body and reality and the relationship between the two and your mind and the higher self or God and the relationship between the two, processing that through a rigidly linear and unidimensional way of looking at that very flow of data. So this, I call this the self-conscious. You, you are self-conscious. You are conscious of the fact that you are a person separate from reality and on a una, a one track, a one monorail track of time, past, present, and future, and you're locked in to that linear mode of transporting, transportation through consciousness, through time, based off of one linear possibility. And then that one linear possibility explodes into complexity when the intelligence that we have can project into the future. Is there a tiger around the corner ready to, to, to kill me? That intelligence being distorted into anxiety, into the fear of the future pain that will happen based off of these many, many multitudes of, pers of personalities, of possibilities, that when they are being processed in your imagination, they feel like they're happening now, and that's what gives you the, the panic attacks, that's what gives you the anxiety, that's what gives you the stress, but we're focusing on anxiety. So that's what it means to have anxiety. So let me know if you have any questions on that, and I would be glad to, to answer or go further. But let's move on. Where does it really come from? I feel like I touched on that, but it really comes from the overly personal, overly personal way that you take your emotions to be yourself. So the anxiety now it's it's a it's a feedback loop that gets worse and worse but if we look at the anxiety as the the manifestation of this all of a sudden you can see that it really comes from the separation that you feel from the emotions that you're feeling and translating and the definitions, the sense of self being informed by the temporary ch changing states of your vibrational frequency of your emotional state. So you're looking at the emotions as this is me, and so the emotions are telling you anxiety, so thus the anxiety comes in like that. The anxiety is, uh, the anxiety is the overthinking, the anxiety is the, the neurotic mind, and that's, that's me. So then I feed that cycle by continuing to feel that the anxiety is personal, that the, the stories that it's t telling are my stories. The, the circumstances that it's telling me to be afraid of are my circumstances. And so it feeds on itself, and that's what creates the anxiety, is you're projecting all of this future. You're, you're dreaming all of this future in an overly personal way, and so the energy can't process efficiently to, 
to allow you to have an awareness of space to actually see the information that's being flow, flown through your body and your mind clearly or accurately enough or more precise enough to understand that it, it's not as, as personal as you think it is. Now, that doesn't mean that you're not taking responsibility or owning your, your, your reality, but there is a quantum perspective here where you balance out where the scarcity or the overabundance is, is uh, not in alignment with what is actually true for you. So when I say scarcity or overabundance, anxiety can sometimes be too much energy. It can be abundance of passion being distorted into a negative charge of an experience. And again, so that's when you get the space to actually see it from a bigger picture perspective, all of a sudden now the energy can be processed more efficiently and, and the anxiety doesn't actually stick because you're no longer taking it personally as a person. So now let's get more into the personal side of this for me. Um, how did I experience anxiety growing up? So for me, I was a, I'm, I'm a very sensitive. I am aware of a lot, but back then I was not aware of what being an empath actually means. And so here I was this innocent, open child and did not have the tools or the people to be able, or the knowledge, the wisdom, to be able to grasp that what I was experiencing was actually the environment, the sensitivity to the environment around me, including people, most, mostly including the people, and their emotional states. And so being an empath, like I was, is like being a sponge to the pains and traumas of those around you when they are unaware or un unconscious of it themselves. So the way I survived this was being a chameleon and being a people pleaser to dance in my sensitivity to avoid conflict because I could sense even before I was aware of it, I could sense where the landmines of anger were in the, in the people that were around me and the people that I interacted with. But that compounds into an overthinking of perfectionism and uh, the fear of making a mistake, uh, the fear of failing, the fear of standing out, the fear of um, speaking truth, speaking my truth. Uh, so I was definitely an anxious kid, but I was able to mask it so good that uh, it was never, I was never, it was never shown overtly how anxious I was. Uh, only those that like really were sensitive too could actually sense the, uh, sense the anxiety. And so when it came to being on stage, when it came to uh, speaking to girls, when it came to all of the, the social elements, my shyness, which stat, like I feel is connected with the anxiety because my imagination was so wild that I could imagine so much at once that it would be overwhelming. The anxiety would be so overwhelming that it would just hinder me from taking any action and hinder me from taking any risks and hinder me from uh, really experiencing the intimacy with life uh, that living in the future actually uh, 
withholds you from. Because if you're living in time, you're not in your presence. You're not in the, in the moment and really enjoying the moment because you're too worried, you're too anxious about all of the things that could happen uh, if you were not um, thinking about it, if you weren't constantly thinking, constantly thinking, uh, constantly thinking, constantly thinking, always a step ahead, two steps ahead, 10 steps ahead, uh, always in, in the next moment instead of this moment, you know, that was me, that was me. And I was always, the, the bar for the future always get getting pushed further and further and further like this carrot uh, and it would get further and further and then when I'd reach something, it would just still, there would be always the creation of the future um, to escape into. Um, so that was my experience with anxiety. Uh, it, it, it's a very suppressing to creativity. Um, for my creativity, it was. Uh, Overthinking is a form of anxiety that I had. Um, yeah, I think that's, I mean, it, when you couple being sensitive, being a highly sensitive person uh, with, with a, an introver introverted shyness, um, and a wild imagination, uh, that is a lot of data. It is a lot of data. And it was, it's multidimensional data before I even had the awareness of, of spirituality and uh, metaphysics and, and all of that. That is why the anxiety is neurotic fear. Uh, but it it masks itself in such a, a rational, necessary, required way that that's why it gets so complex. That's why the anxiety is so complex, because it has to find a way to be beneficial or 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 to say that it's beneficial uh, in order to survive. And so the anxiety will always find ways in order to survive. It will always find things to be anxious about in the guy under the guise of. You gotta, you gotta be, you gotta be vigilant. You gotta be always looking ahead. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta like all those rule sets, uh, all those beliefs structures, really uh, get get to the mm, the heart of of like how how I experience anxiety, because in order to be a good boy, you have to follow the rules. And the more that these rules become hard coded uh, and the rules are inherently based off of the fear that created the rules in general, then the anxiety feels like it is a necessary requirement of living in quote unquote reality and having a life and, and juggling a life. And, and, and that's what makes it so crafty. That's what makes it so, um, uh, complex and an un, unapproachable because it is it is so enwrapped entangled with here's what I need to do to survive I need to be in the future in order to survive that's the way it paints that's the way it projects that's the way it survives that's the way it it uh, guarantees that it is not figured out for the illusion that it actually is for the facade of fear that is actually beneath it. And so um, how did I transform it? How did I transform it, release it, and turn it into a superpower? So this is where upgrading uh, really comes in. Because uh, when I started to dive into this and started to get sensitive to the anxiety that felt so necessary actually didn't feel good. 
And, and the moment I became sensitive to my, truth feeling good and illusions not feeling good and pain not feeling good, uh, the, the more, the quicker I was able to see, oh, wait, I have a choice here. So the, the choice point was, was the most, that was the biggest uh, magnitude thing is that, again, if you're living in the mind, if you're living in the mind, the anxiety is just a fact of life. But as soon as you come back into the body and the body is asked, does the anxiety feel good? Does the anxiety feel true? Then all of a sudden that explodes a, a new choice, a new possibility of, oh, do I actually need this anxiety? Do I actually want this anxiety in my life? And quickly the answer is, hell no, <laughs> fuck no, uh, because it doesn't feel good. It feels limiting. It feels um, constricting. It feels constraining. It feels like uh, a weight, a burden, uh, a distraction. It feels not fun, not playful. All of these things that come when you're given a choice start, start to transform it immediately. The moment you, you give yourself the choice, it transforms as, as the speed of light. Uh, so just the, that choice of do I want anxiety sets off the journey. It sets off the seeking for solutions, for the cure, for the healing, uh, for the upgrading, whatever you know, metaphor you want to subscribe to. That, that resonates and excites you, um, the transformation happens when you make the choice. Um, and then, of course, it's the, the mastery of the transformation is the, the nuances and subtleties of understanding and realizing what the complexities are actually pointing to in terms of universal lessons of love versus fear. So that first step of choice leads into, okay, so anxiety is no longer a fact, but is it love or fear? And then that starts to in, disentangle a little bit more uh, with um, how much fear is actually fueling anxiety uh, when it's no longer a fact, when it's no longer unconscious. And so that starts to un untie the knot even more uh, about like, okay, so yes, I've been looking at anxiety as like a necessary uh, way of, of, of living a successful life uh, to not get hurt, uh, to avoid conflict. And then all of a sudden, okay, so it's actually fear. It's actually a cloak of, of, uh, Complexity to not look at anxiety is just simply, purely fear for one's survival. And so that starts to disentangle even more. And then you start to get even deeper, deeper into where the anxiety is coming from, where it's coming from. And that gets you to an even broader space of, it gets you to an even broader space of understanding anxiety comes from the mind and not the heart. That's a simple way of putting it. Not 100% accurate, but that dis distinction will help you see Okay, so in the anxiety, it fills up the space. It fills up your space <laughs> mentally. And then, the, then you're, but it's like filled with a purpose. And then it's like, nope, there's no purpose to it. You get one level up. And then all of a sudden, okay, this is all just fear. One level up. And now it's like, oh, where does it come from? And now you're like, level up. Oh, it's the mind. And you're the awareness of a mind that you were inside of. So it's like you're given the glimpse of you were in the prison, in the prison cell, and now you can be outside a witness of the prison cell to see the mind as the prison cell. 
from a, a, a more spacious, more self-aware place uh, to observe it. And now the, the, uh, the precisions can start to play where you start to really precisely pick apart the codes of this anxiety uh, from a place of your power, from a place of creativity. So even right there, I would say that anxiety is just misused creativity. It's, it's fear-based creativity contorting your imagination into all of these fearful-based uh, possibilities. But now once you disentangle that, now the creativity can start to flow properly, properly to where the passion that's the fuel of this creative force can start to flow without the restrictive self-conscious anxiety of the mind and flow into art, flow into your business, flow into your writing, flow into uh, conversations, flow into uh, travel, flow into experience, like in a, in a more natural way, because it's not being routed, if you think about plumbing, it's not being routed through this ultra complex maze of a mind in order to get to the next place, in order to get out of your mouth, uh, if you're speaking it, but now it can flow ah, through the mind as the tool, as it was, as it's best designed, as it's most efficient, as it's most peak performance, as it's most flow state, uh, without the negative operating system of, of self-consciousness, uh, creating the anxiety based off of thinking that you are on one timeline of time, past, present, future, and you're locked in that uh, frame. Um, Kelly, you verbalize what I've experienced to a T. Awesome, 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 awesome. Share away. Um, and so just in that mastery, once you've um, loosened the grip of your belief with the suspension of belief, <laughs> the suspension of the belief is just the same as the suspension of disbelief, it's the same muscle. Uh, now you can see again the passion, the passion for survival, as it was, is, is lighter. And now it's the passion for living, the passion for creating can flow. And then all of a sudden you see, oh, the anxiety was just a distorted understanding of my passion, of my creativity that was operating at a lower frequencies of fear and density and pain and, and uh, mistrust and unworthiness and shame and guilt. And that's what was dictating what I could see, what I could be aware of. Now that passion is more pure. This, it's the same force that was creating the anxiety can now be channeled upward in the upward spiral uh, towards love and joy and uh, wealth and prosperity and all of the things in the upward spiral direction where there's a spaciousness, there's a, an invincibility, there's an unshakability, there's a limitlessness, um, there's a lightness, a beingness, because you, you're understanding, you've leveled up from the survival of the fittest, scarcity-based operating system into, as my work calls, imagination technology. So I hope that helps. I would love to answer any questions you have. Uh, and I, I am super passionate about, uh, about this. Um, super passionate about passion. Passion is my passion. So, let me know uh, what you got from this. Let me know uh, if I can help. And if you feel like anyone in your audience would get value from this, uh, I would appreciate, I would love to share, to get some exposure and visibility on this message. And I look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye, guys.